Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. I wanted to have a press conference because as of 5 o'clock today, I will be transitioning into the life of a private citizen. And I want to make sure that I afforded an opportunity to be expeditious to the uh, members of the press and assemble everyone all at once so that you guys don't have to camp out at my door <laughs> and, and do all those things. I'm, I won't be a public official any longer, and I'm just going to ask that you uh, get your questions and whatever out here so that now that I'm in private life, my family can enjoy some peace without having to worry about the cameras outside and what have you. I want it to be accessible and available, but I didn't want to have to go through sequentially and talk to all of you reporters who are assembled here today. Um, I know from my years of experience in public life that it's important to make sure that the record is straight and I've been called by several and told that we will have this conference, but it's been reported that I resign. So listen up, all members of the media, because I need you to understand that in order to get the record straight, I did not resign. I did not resign. So I know that's being reported. I was fired. Uh, and that's why we're here today. And I'd just like to take care of one other housekeeping note and say thank you for the outpouring of love and support from everyone who's assembled here, from all of those who called or sent messages otherwise who couldn't be here. And I am just very touched by the fact that you all uh, showed up at this particular occasion. I've gotten numerous questions about who's the guy to my right. He's a good friend of mine. His name is Jim Sheehan. Uh, he won't be speaking, but he's here. And I'd just like to start by saying to all of you that March 2nd is a very important day in my life. It represents a beginning and it represents an end. On March 2nd, 1951, I was uh, the gift that my mother received because I was born. On March 2nd, 2011, that represents the end because I was fired. <laughs> so how many of you have the distinction of being fired on your birthday? Not many. I was fired and I made a request because I had a considerable amount of vacation time to transition out utilizing my vacation time, which will take me to about June. So I would be officially off the payroll in June. Let me just tell you, I'm a native of St. Petersburg. I've been working with the city of St. Pete since 1973. During that time, my objectives have always remained the same. To first and foremost, to be fair, to be inclusive, to advocate for public policy that recognizes that some in our community have not always had equal privileges and rights. I've been since my employment and even before committed to community building, community building, fairness, inclusiveness, and doing the right thing. I can tell you that from 1973 to present, I've been controversial. I've been controversial because of some of the stands that I've taken uh, to include uh, the whole issue of drug treatment. That controversy hasn't subsided. The most recent controversy is this issue of funerals and my attendance at funerals. Let me just share with you a perspective. 
In 1980, we had a death of a police officer. That officer's name was Herbert Ray Sullivan. I knew him very well. We went to the same academy class. We graduated together. We ran track together. I can give you a whole litany of things to just demonstrate that we were the best of friends. I was a pallbearer at Herbert Ray Sullivan's funeral. You see me standing here before you, a large man, and it may seem implausible to you that a large man can't be affected by the death of someone that he had a strong relationship with. Prior to Herbert Ray Sullivan, I lost my best friend in childhood in Vietnam. I have a whole series of siblings. I lost a brother who was very near and dear to me. I don't take my private life into the public specter, but I can tell you that I've had to live with a series of deaths that have taken a toll on me, and I can tell you also that when the two officers were killed, for many, that was two on one day. For me, it was three. Because not only did I have to deal with their deaths, but also the death and the remembrance of my good friend, Herbert Roy Sullivan. When Crawford was killed, it wasn't three for me. It was four. So you need to understand that I paid my respects to those families and to those officers at a wake. I could not, could not go to the funeral, and I made my immediate supervisor aware of that. I also paid respects at a funeral for an individual who was the person involved in taking the lives of two of the other officers. And I say to you what I said to the mayor and to the members of cabinet. Those of us in uniform who cross Central Avenue daily, we don't return back to the South Side as tourists. We live here. And because we live here, And because we live here, and because we live where we live, and because of hysterical patterns, we know people that others deem to be criminal, to labor, and what have you. And when one of those individuals goes astray, you also know a whole host of family members. So what do you do? In my case, I'm on two sides of a family. I'm on a past police family and I'm on the side where I knew the family of an individual involved. The easy thing to do for me would have been to disavow the Lacey family. And if I'd done that, we wouldn't be standing here. Because I'm going to tell you in no uncertain terms, my reasons for not attending the funerals of those officers were, in my opinion, legitimate because to do so would have exacerbated my mental, my physical well-being. I had a relationship with the police department that I served for 28 years, and I can tell you also that I made the request after a memo was issued that said, if you are not going to the funeral, see me and look for a different assignment. I did that, and I was told, well, this is after Lacey. He really wants you to be at this one. I indicated that I hadn't attended the first one and articulated those reasons, and those reasons still held 
before the second funeral. Now, please understand that not all cabinet members attended Amen. the funeral. But I'm the cabinet member who, for whatever reason, I'm being told now, should have been there. I can say to you, in no uncertain terms, that in my years of service, I've had the pleasure of working with wonderful people at the police department, at City Hall and City Administration, in this community, and with community institutions. My hope and my expectation for this community is that we take a model from two families that were severely traumatized during this crisis situation. And if you followed, for example, the press conference and the reports of Yazowitz's wife, you could see that she said, in no uncertain terms, this is not a time for hate. This is not a time for disruption. This is a time for healing. And if you take an example from the Lacey family, you heard them say, we would do anything. They condone not what their brother did. Let me say that again. They did not condone what their brother did. They reached across the aisle to those families, and those families reached across the aisle. But for some reason, some reason, some in this community have chosen to follow the edicts and the rant and raves of radio talk personalities. And rather than sow seeds of healing, we're sowing seeds of contempt. We're sowing seeds of division. And many are pointing to me as the individual who represents the polarization of St. Petersburg. Well, I can tell you in no uncertain terms that in my years of service with this city, I've been subjected to more scorn, more bad publicity, more printed lies in the media, and when the lies are finally corrected, persons don't necessarily see that correction. I've yet to complain, and I've yet to do anything but stand firm. I'm first and foremost a man, a man of principle, and I stand by those principles. And if being fired for standing by my principles is the outcome, then so be it. I'd like to close by thanking my family, because while I've been the public official, they've had to wake up in the mornings and read the bad things about their loved one. My mom has to contend with reading headlines that describe someone that she knows in ways that she knows he's not. And I want to say to them, all of them, my siblings, my children, and everybody, thank you for the support. Thank you for the support. And I can tell you in no uncertain terms that I walk the life that I believe. I have no regrets for anything that I've done. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it the same way. Thank you so much. I just received I just received a note that says the uh, 
president of the NAACP has some comments. We get his comments, and then we will have Q and A. First, I'll ask that the individuals who met with us uh, around noon would come because I would like to say uh, that we do represent more than just one entity and one individual, that our statement reflects all these persons that are coming to the forefront, concerned citizens, organizational leaders, pastors, and business officials from this city. We view this decision by Mayor Foster as a reaction to appease the forces incensed that Dr. Goliath Davis did not attend the funerals of the officers slain this January and February. It is clear that this is not a performance issue, as Mayor Foster's press release implies by citing loss of confidence. Indeed, the mayor's own record one month ago indicating that Dr. Davis was doing an exemplary job and a very recent job performance evaluation found the same. We also wish to be clear that we do not view this as a racial issue. We should not and will not allow this incident to further divide our city along racial lines. We respect Mayor Foster's authority to make the decision, but at the same time, we honor and respect the service and sacrifice that Dr. Davis has rendered to the city, often in the face of great opposition and undeniably with outstanding results. Yet, we're not calling for Dr. Davis to be reinstated. We are sure that Dr. Davis does not wish to be reinstated. What happens now is the key. There's a role that needs to be filled. There are issues that continue to disproportionately affect and impact the African American community that this administration is not addressing. The tentative plan to combine the departments that Dr. Davis formerly supervised into other city departments is unacceptable, unstrategic, and insufficient. It is imperative that this very important role remains intact, that this city continue to embrace diversity and inclusion in its leadership, not just symbolically, but substantively. That the proposed decentralization not instigate a trend toward exclusion or diffusion of African-American voices in the future of the city and its programs, and most importantly, that the mayor communicate his plan for moving forward, in his words, toward a common goal of seamlessness and economic stability. We hereby offer that the NAACP and Agenda 2010 will co-host a meeting with Mayor Foster at his early convenience with a group of civic and business leaders to discuss these pivotal issues. Thank you. Okay, I'm sure you guys have some questions, so at this time I would like to uh, entertain those. No, the mayor said early this morning that he had lost confidence in you. just heard from this group that it, 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 they don't want it to be a racial issue, but Daryl Roussan told us about an hour ago we don't want to bleach City Hall. Were you fired, do you think, because you're an African American? I can tell you why I was told I was fired. What do you think? I, I was told I was fired because I didn't attend a funeral. But I'm asking you, if, if, you were, if you were in the same position and you were not an African American, do you think you would have been fired? I was told I was fired because I didn't attend a funeral. And as I previously stated, not all cabinet members attended the funeral. One final time, and I'll, I'll let you. So are you not willing to say this is not a racial issue? That's the question. I was told I was fired because I didn't attend the funeral. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. I would uh, suggest that you uh, consult with the, the mayor and his staff on that, but uh, there were several who didn't attend. Which other former or cabinet members are former police chiefs? Which other cabinet members are former police chiefs is a question that you're posing. Which other cabinet members have been a former police chief? 
who had the unpleasant duty of carrying his best friend to his grave. What is the difference between 